Good evening, college fans from coast to coast. Waldo Winslow here. 1926 has lots of changes in uh, American morals, particularly on the college campuses. For an inside look at our college kids, we're now going to talk to the most famous fraternity house mother in America, <laughs> Miss Marty Frickett. What a precious studio. It's just as I pictured in your portfolio that you sent me at Benler Falls. Do I sit here? Right here. Wait, which microphone is live? Oh, they're both live. Oh, you yeah. Sit right here. All right. All right. Oh, my back, you, you know. Make it? Yeah, my stepbrother threw me down the other day and <laughs> he needed about a buck five and he rolled me near the barn. <laughs> I'm talking about you, Maynard. <laughs> He's listening to us. And gosh, you're handsome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never been fortunate enough to marry. I came close during a train wreck, <laughs> but I was, I was thrown near a man. <laughs> yes, but you do look lovely, and I must say that. Well, I don't touch my hair. No. This is it. That's it. Oh, yes. The whole thing. Yes, well, I my know. dress, I, my, this was handed down three generations. It's a little tight in places, but my, 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 no, my the, It's the, not too tight there, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we're on radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some pretty wild parties that go on in those fraternity houses. Oh, yes. Uh, well, we used to have a lot of wild parties. Oh. Now, the current dean is something else. He was warden at state prison. <laughs> and uh, you just don't fool around with him. You don't give him no static. And uh, he has the kids in bed at half past five. And uh, he's just too tough. And he, well, I'll give you an example. For instance, the other day, I was bringing him some cookies. He's single, and so am I, and I, I wasn't trying, you know, to make any points. And uh, I didn't introduce myself. And uh, he dropped me, you know. Uh, cookies went up in the air, and he knocked me out of the second-story window. Well, I got up. I'm, uh, I'm 69 years old, but I got up on a ladder, went up there, and pulled his head and turned it all the way around. <laughs> never lay his hands on me again. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be the town owl for a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, what's your, uh, what's your opinion of these college girls of the, uh, of the 20s? Well, I think what's happened with the 20s is the way these children dress. Anybody that takes an inner tube and ties it around their bodies, now that's not right. I don't think it's right. Uh, I don't think the, uh, the man upstairs would want them to do that. They seem to want to bring themselves in. Woman has uh, developed and been given something, then they should show it. And uh, they've made the, made themselves uh, in these funny little dresses and headbands and stuff and doing. <laughs> I don't buy that. I want to see a woman full out. Don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> you 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 use the wrong word. It wasn't full out. With me, it's fallout. <laughs> Would you care for a little, just a, a sip of this? It's a, what is that? It's my last name. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Martin. Martin, just a, It won't hurt you none. You know, I used to put that stuff on my face. <laughs> Boy. Boy, I think I'll go down to Billy Niners and get some more of that. <laughs> just put that all over me. Here you are drinking it out of a glass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what listen. makes me run. Hey, listen. <laughs> that's what makes me numb. <laughs> a lot of these wild young boys need help and guidance. Uh, where? Where? Well, when they come to your room for oh, advice. Oh, yes. You know, what I had... do you tell them? What do you say to them for advice? I had a wild boy come to my room the other night. A boy? A boy. And, uh... He was uh, 38, you know, which I think is a little... Uh, I, I, would, I would say he was definitely graduate school. Yeah. And, uh, well, he just sat there and he put his hands in his hands, and you can't see them on radio, 
but his hands was as big as a Kodiak's. <laughs> and he, he uh, said... What is a Kodiak? <laughs> a Kodiak is, uh, a Kodiak's a bear, Waldo. Kodiak bear. Oh, I thought that was a camera. <laughs> Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Of no, Kodiak. no, yeah, that's all right, Waldo. You know, it's amazing you come this far. <laughs> well, tell me, Maude, uh, what's the difference between college today and college when, uh, when you went to it? I know this sounds corny, but my boys and girls, regardless of their faults, bless them. I'm very moved by this. Thank God they can't see me crying. <laughs> Those, please, please. No, 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 no. Too late. <laughs> he, he put his hand on my shoulder. <laughs> Not one of them kids, bless their hearts, ever give me nothing. <laughs> there ain't been one Christmas. There ain't been one Valentine's Day. There ain't been one Thanksgiving. I ever I even got a napkin ring. <laughs> I hate him! <laughs> Waldo Winslow here. No football coach has captured the public fancy like the great Newt Rockney of Notre Dame, the most famous coach in college history, the one and only Newt Rockney. Your famous backfield is known as the Four Horsemen. Could you tell us? How they got that name, the Four Horsemen? Uh, when, when I first came to Notre Dame, it was the Four Bunnies. Well, who do you consider to be the best football player on uh, your team? Ronald Reagan. <laughs> he was one of the four. Pat O'Brien, what am I doing in this? Um... No, I have to say... Very honestly, that question is very valid. I used to play tight end. I'll bet you did. <laughs> I'll bet if anybody could play tight end, <laughs> you could play it. Where did you play tight end? <laughs> now we'll play to you for a while, Waldo. Oh, it's Steubenville, Ohio. Oh, oh did you know? End. Oh, oh yes. they're tough down there, aren't oh, they? Oh, yeah, but we were from a poor... I was very poor. Were you know, you? I was made in Japan. I understand. <laughs> And when the garbage man came around, he used to say, leave two cans. We never had garbage. Oh, that's how poor yeah, cool. I understand. And you have no idea how this cigarette is burning my fingers. <laughs> now, uh, I know that rooting sections are very important. How do you personally handle cheerleaders? Very carefully. <laughs> well, incidentally, for all the chaps at Notre Dame, you gonna hang yourself? Oh, no. <laughs> it says to Waldo Emerson. Here's what it says, and I don't need my glasses. To Waldo Emerson, one of the great announcers, entrepreneurs of all times, a man who has given so much to radio over the years. He is truly one of the true great Americans, a man who stands in his own right, known and loved by millions of Americans. WWBM in Chicago and all the boys at South Bend at Notre Dame, we want you to know that you must have this whistle and wear it forever. 1920. <laughs> <laughs>